understanding about East Africa then. And okay. then uh, I'll take you through, I'll and then I'll allow also other East African members, uh, EDs, to also uh, give us insight, uh, especially if today we have the Somali team, uh, it will be good. I've seen, I've seen the, our, our Djibouti partners on board, so Mohamed is online, so I think maybe also Mohamed will also join us in. Um, briefly, I'll just, I'll just mention, uh, and I'll just want to say thank you everyone for joining this session today. This is a Africa monthly, uh, meeting with East Africa hosting and we're hosting from Nairobi today. My name is Cliff Mboya, executive director for Global Chamber Nairobi. Uh, I'll, I'll want to say that, uh, just for introduction, East Africa today stands at uh, 400 million population. For those who would want to know about uh, the, the current market uh, base of East Africa. And East Africa in Nairobi, Nairobi plays a, a big role for East Africa in trade, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in a lot of in, in trade and, and technology, agriculture and renewable in, energy. Those are, those are areas which, um, as East Africa, there's a huge focus and all these um, um, are centered around Nairobi. Why, am, why are we talking about Nairobi? Because you see, Nairobi is uh, becoming an hub and it has always been an hub for the African market. And for everyone to understand and even get a footing in the African market, especially the Eastern, Eastern Central Africa, it's always best to start from Nairobi because Nairobi has already created an hub uh, or created an environment for all this. East Africa, including Kenya, presents a variety of businesses, opportunity across uh, different uh, sectors. Some of the key sectors are inform information technology and innovation, which is Kenya is currently leading and significantly in the te technological startups, uh, particularly in the fintech sector, with the growing, uh, with the growing uh, tech savvy population. In Kenya, there is uh, that uh, tech survey population, and the government support is Im immense in terms of uh, driving the fintech, uh, fintech and technology. And just to mention, uh, just to mention on the information and technology, I would want to mention that uh, the, the the current director of uh, of uh, Thunderbird Africa, Philip Thigo, who was supposed to be our our guest speaker today has been appointed by the president as the as the AI advisor to the UN and also the special envoy to our country as the as, as for for technology so that's the reason for perhaps uh, philip got got by uh, this one month i think he will be very busy and i, I know we'll get him the, the next time once he settled in his in, in various office the other sector is agri agriculture and agribusiness. Kenya is known for its agriculture products such as tea, coffee, flowers, and there are opportunities of investment in agribusiness, especially agribusiness in terms of value chain, value chains and distribution and processing and export. This is area now that the, 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 the government is encouraging more investors and foreign direct investment to come to, to, to Kenya to look at possible setting up processing uh, plants and export. Our second player, our second uh, guest speaker who would have been here also is is a player in the in the in the in the farming, and this um, he, he exports he exports uh, most of uh, from 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 produce. Sorry, he exports some of the farm produce. Is one of is one of us in the in the in the advisory board, Joe Kelo, 
And uh, I will also want to bring him on board uh, in our next meeting. So he will be able to, to tell us what he's doing in farming and how he's doing the, 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 the processing of, of products that he wants to, to also uh, share and send abroad. The next uh, area is renewable energy. Uh, East Africa is abundant on uh, renewable energy resources with Kenya leading in the geothermal geo and wind power. The region offers opportunities for solar, wind, and hydroelectric. Not to mention that also uh, there is a report showing that also Tanzania, there is huge deposit of gas, which could also be explored in the, ne in the near future. This is a one area which also we, we need to also start fo focusing on. And those who are in the, in the gas and the industry, we will also want to invite some, uh, invite some of the speaker, key, keynote speakers who will, who will also take us through this in, in the ne next future. In terms of infrastructure and development, with the need of improved trans transportation networks, energy facilities, urban development, there's opportunity for investment and construction and logistics happening right now in Kenya. Because everyone now their eye is looking into Kenya and uh, this is giving us, uh, the, there's a need for uh, more development in terms of uh, real estate, in terms of logistics. So there's opportunity for those who are in, in, in other states, in other countries and they will want to come to Kenya and uh, invest, uh, invest directly, this is, some of the areas which we will help and also as global chamber will 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 give you support to be able to to put your investment directly we are now in uh, in early stages discussing with uh, with uh, um, we, with uh, I won't want to disclose this but I will discuss it later we are in early stages to uh, with the government officials to see how we can also help those who are members of global chamber and they will want to invest in Kenya, how we can help them to and support them technically so that they can get a, an easier, an easier way to position themselves within within, within, within within these areas. Another area is healthcare and pharmaceuticals. There's a growing demand for quality healthcare services, pharmaceutical products in East Africa. Having that now, you have known that we have 400 million population. There is a need to have plants and pharmaceutical to create their, to put their equipment here for healthcare facilities, medical. I've had Pamela say that she's in the, in, in the industry of healthcare. So these are some of the opportunities that have presented itself in Kenya. And I know with the, with the, con, with the continuous conversation about um, the Eastern, Eastern African Federation and uh, East African community, this is something which will, will really help those who are key players in the uh, the first the first key players to to position themselves when we are building the when we are building up towards uh, having a, an, an East African uh, community federation. Uh, the current trends in East Africa include uh, some of the current trends which you will have noted, and I, I know most of you know about this is uh, the mobile money and di digital payments. This is huge. Kenyans have moved, uh, especially Kenyans, there's now a, a traditional, it's even a culture that most of you'll, you'll rarely see people using money. The last time I used, uh, personally, the last time I used a currency, it was a long time ago, maybe before, uh, during COVID or after, uh, before COVID. Uh, currently, most of the payments I'm doing, I'm doing online, I'm paying uh, shops, I'm paying, uh, I'm using Visa card, I'm using uh, mobile money. So there is there is a, a market for the cashless economy for those who are providers and those who are who are wishing to use the same the same items. Then the e-commerce has also gone up for those who are in the every every food delivery. Um, those who are selling community, they're using e-commerce platforms. So I would say Kenya has taken on its own path in terms of global uh, 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 becoming global yeah, a glo global common economy it has taken its path and the people have understood what is the mission and everyone 
is utilizing those tools that are already in place. Uh, the last trend, on, 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 or not the last, but the second last trend is the sustainable development. There's a fo focus on sustainability and environmentally friendly practices, driving investment in green technologies, ecotourism, and conservation. We have the, you can see there's the, the Tatu city, there's the Konza city, there's uh, all these cities already growing. And uh, the government is pushing to have to have them, to have them uh, like the Konza city is where we say the, the, the Silicon city of Kenya. We, we are seeing more and more investors are coming as the as as the as the developments taking shape in the in the Konza city, and that has also been adapted in other small towns where now they are also trying to think uh, or to figure out how to to do uh, how to come up with sustainable development uh throughout the throughout the country in other counties the last one is the youth entrepreneurship which has also been addressed by by the youth bulge which has uh from from 2015 there has been a youth bulge and the government has put a lot of focus in youth pop, in the youth pop, for, uh, population uh building entrepreneurial and leading startups that are promoting startups within 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 the communities and creating programs incubation programs and pushing for their funding so this is some of the areas which uh, it's 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 uh, it's it's good for exploring for those who are in business and for those who are planning to enter the the the, the Kenyan market and also in eastern africa why i'm saying eastern africa is because most of the indicators that are shown in that are viable for Kenya will work across the East African region, depending on the on the air on the area, on the area that you're looking for. If it's infrastructure or healthcare or or um, or uh, agriculture, because this region now is uh, for, for the for the rural rural region. Will turn more into agri agri business and the agriculture. For the urban region, it will turn more into e-commerce and uh, uh, infrastructure de development. The last the last one, as we said, is the youth entrepreneurship, uh, which is hugely supported by the government and a lot of uh, local and foreign uh, foreign uh, investments are also coming into us. That if it if you look at the at the statistics, shows that. Uh, for foreign direct inv investment in Kenya is is upwards up to 800 million as, the, as for the year 2021 2023 um if you exploring business opportunity will while while keeping an eye on regional trends can help investors and and enterprises make informed decision for entering the the, the Kenyan market so these are things that I would urge anyone to feel comfortable enough to work with us, uh, even get uh, uh, get close to Global Chamber, because these insights, we, we, we always look at them and we also advise investors on where to, where, where they should and where they can, they can put the investment. Thank you very much, Glo. Uh, Doug? If there's any 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 queries, I will invite I'll, I'll invite questions. I'll invite uh, other members to also speak to give some few remarks. Then you can continue. That that was really a great summary. Uh, I I think that's a very valuable one. The does anybody have any questions or comments or any additions that you'd like to make uh, regarding? Uh, what Cliff talked about. Really well uh, done. Yeah, Cliff, thank you so much. That was super thorough and and very helpful. And and uh I feel like it opened my ability to, you know, connect you with some some people that that are tied into this sort of cross across Kenya. Um one person that I'd I've I've already connected you with, Steve Ogutu from MCLD. He's one to to start to re-engage a conversation with. It seems like uh, there's something. It's not uh, 
set in stone yet, but it seems like there's something in the works with USAID uh, and and cross border uh, trade and collaboration. Um, I, I also met with with Zazi, who I know you're working with, and um, and so it seems like there's there's a ton of opportunities. But I'd love to yeah you know, hop on a call with you one day soon to to share some of these thoughts and 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 connect you with some some other folks to uh, widen your impact. But no, thank you for for all this great information. Oh, one question about about uh, the uh, gas deposits. Is that for Tanzania? Is that onshore or offshore? Do you know? Um, I'm 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 in talks with uh, a certain company that is dealing with this, and I think they're in the initial stage on uh, doing the visibility study. But uh, there is potentially a huge uh, a huge potential in uh, in in turning uh, Tanzania as 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 a major player in the, within the East African market. Cool. Yeah, and so I've I've uh, have some really good I'll, connections I'll, I'll in, connect, in in the oil and gas. With, yeah, I'll I'll connect you with the, with the players. Then you can take it from there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd love to love to help. See how I can help. Thanks, Cliff. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacob. Anyone else with uh, any question? Oh, perhaps uh, we'll uh, also go to the health care. So maybe uh, I see. Pamela? Yes, hello. Um, I, I appreciated your remarks and your overview, Cliff. Thank you. Um, we have been working within Kenya for probably the last 16 to 18 months. We have a partnership with the Kenyan Ministry of Health, as well as the Kenya Healthcare Federation, as well as some other entities um, within the region to really not only provide training and certification, but to actually change the scope of practice for clinicians to be able to um, have within their scope to do OB scanning so that more women have access to ultrasounds and more clinicians who are majority women in this field um, have access to this type of professional development training and certification. Um, so it's been quite a journey and I greatly appreciated your remarks, especially for the advancements in the innovation that are present in Kenya. For um, healthcare is such a legacy type of field, uh, particularly in the United States, we're not ones to really change very quickly. So in Kenya, you know, we're really learning from, um, from our cohorts there about how, how to have the ability to do some new technology to really lean into um, verified credentials for clinicians to lean into simulation and AI, specifically for training and certification. So it's not just the same old thing and to have a broader access for more people. So um, that's the type of work that we're doing. Um, I am really interested in speaking more about two folks in East Africa to think about how to start to um, set up an entity there, understanding what type of entity might make sense in order to have a, a sustainable future. This is This is not going to be a funded thing, but really a fee-for-service business model to ensure the, the economic sustainability within the region. So that's that's the work that we're trying to do. Well, well congratulations on the inroads that you've already made. And uh, we're always willing to sit down with you guys and uh, see where you guys have reached and where we can be able to come in and help you to, to, reach, your, to reach your goals. That is what is our aim, and we are happy to see that uh, there's more people coming on, uh, coming in, in Kenya to 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 give us the support that is needed. Thank you very much. Thank you. We did just also receive um, a USAID grant, um, which is the first of this for us. So we're really excited to see how that can propel us for, propel us forward a little bit more. So thank you. Okay, uh, now that you've mentioned USAID, I think maybe you you could also apply for the for the USD TDA because I saw now they are also they are also now focusing in Africa, and there's possible uh, there's possible uh, way to partner with them to give you the grants and uh, and things towards if you're looking to towards de developing in Africa. Thank you very yeah. much. 
That's great. Thank you. Uh, Pamela, what do, what do you guys have on the ground there? Is, are they in uh, Nairobi? Yes. So I have a, um, a lead in Kenya, in Nairobi, um, and she does a lot of our um, on the ground, all of our on the ground work uh, with stakeholders um, and knows everyone's WhatsApp and slides into their DMs for all of the to get all of the work done. She's she's absolutely remarkable. Interesting. What what do you see as the kind of the next steps for for success? Well, for us, now that we've got all of the partners uh, within the ecosystem in place, it's continuing to um, bring on uh, other partners to do some of the implementation, not just in Nairobi, but throughout the 47 counties. Um, and to really be able to look at all six levels of the healthcare system within Nairobi and how to best address. Um, so at this present moment, we're looking at different implementation partners for training and being able to meet different training entities where they are and how they can train other folks and being able to have the right education and tools together to be able to not only provide the, the trainers the, the, what they need, but also to then meet the needs of those that need to be to have that training, depending on where they are on the, on the spectrum of beginner to advanced, et cetera. The other piece to this, of course, is working with the device manufacturers who are already in market to see what's the best opportunity to partner with them in their value proposition to ensure there's a sustainable um, way for everyone to get devices that are not used, that are not donated, but actual new devices um, throughout the, the coming years. Got it. Fascinating. Great, great work. Does anybody have any questions for uh, Patricia? Pamela. Yes. Oh. I think. All right, Pamela. Go ahead. Hi, Cliff. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> quite fine, quite uh, fine. How are you? Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, sorry to be late. I just uh, caught the last uh, presentation talking about agribusiness. So that's the last thing that I caught. <laughs> and uh, that's my speciality also because I'm in the agribusiness. So I'm the executive director in Morocco of uh, the Global Trump. So uh, we are in the same continent. <laughs> so I think we... Uh, we think we have a lot of uh, things uh, to do between uh, two countries because I know uh, there is a lot to develop in the agribusiness sector, especially uh, the food security in Africa. So a lot of opportunities, a lot of uh, of uh, investments. So uh, I think I can uh, we can collaborate on that because. Because we have like complementary between the two countries. There are some products that are available in uh, Morocco and also other products available in Africa. So I think why not to develop uh, trade in, uh, in such uh, products? Because there is a big lack in, in trade between uh, African countries. Sometimes I, I know some countries that buy products from Spain and Morocco export to Spain. So it's very insane, you see. So uh, there are some countries that, that buy products like uh, in double price. So yes. I think these also, these last uh, conventions uh, of uh, free trade agreement between African countries can accelerate that and uh, can develop also the trading many sectors, not especially in agribusiness. So my question, uh, Cliff, just I, I want to have an idea about what is developed in Kenya. Is it the processing uh, food sector or the agriculture, the fresh product sector? So just that, that's the first uh, question that I have. So. Uh, and and also I want to to inform you about concepts that that we can develop also between the two countries is the agro trip. So agro trip is 
is a concept of study tools for agri professionals. So, uh, for example, we can bring professionals from the agriculture sectors from uh, Kenya to Morocco to have like training and uh, and uh, some special uh, visits to modern units, etc. And also, perhaps in the inverse, we can bring also Moroccan professionals to see advancements in uh, in Kenya in in terms of agri business sector. So uh, we did that in Sudan. It was a successful experience, and uh, why not to develop that in uh, in in Kenya? So I think we can have more talks after the the webinar to see how we can. Um, and develop that. <clears throat> Thank you, Cliff. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Munir. I, I want to tell you that uh, we have a very close uh, relationship with the Moroccan embassy here, uh, especially the ambassador. But uh, we had uh, last 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 year, I think I was part of the team was was invited at the uh, Independence Day at Moroccan embassy, and. Um, we have had a discussion. I've seen them uh, take other, even leaders to Morocco to see what Morocco is doing. So for me, this this interaction will be very good, and it's not something which uh, we'll take for granted because I know there is a discussion around agribusiness, uh, and there is a possible uh, there is possible agreements on on this. I would want to talk about because I'm I'm not really sure what is the detail of this information, but I know the the, the relationship between Kenya and Morocco is very good, and uh, there's uh, there's a lot of opportunities that are being discussed in the pipeline. So for me, this one is uh, it, it's something which I'll say it's it's viable and it's it will work. And in, in terms of your question, what you have asked about uh, agribusiness, which areas to look at, I'll tell you it's a broad, it's, it's a broad spectrum. It's a broad, uh, it's a broad, it's an open market, whereby if you're able to start from the beginning where you want to do the agribusiness, where you want to do farming, there are areas which are, uh, you can get the land to do that. If you want to do to put a set of factory for your products, if you want to do the distribution of your product, I'll I'll tell you this is a set of line that uh, you you will it's a free market for you. So it's, there's no specific you can say this is the best area to start. You know the business better in agri business, but I'll tell you it's an holistic thing that if you want to find an holistic solution around it, you're most welcome to do it. Uh, just uh, just to, to, <clears throat> to specify my question, uh, Cliff, because yes. for example, uh, for example, just an example in Morocco, in the last ten years, so they focus on production. For example, the the development of farms, development of production. Uh, but now in this new strategy, they focus on agri uh, on food processing because now the product is available. I don't know if you understand me. That's why my question in Kenya. Okay, I think you, you guys probably need to take that conversation, uh, you know, forward separately. But it's it's a great topic because Africa, most countries in Africa have that issue, right? Um, so, yeah. that, thank you, Manir. I wanted to go back to Pamela, ideally, because Pamela is a new member of Global Chamber, and she talked a little bit about what her what she's doing. And she also, like the ag uh, opportunities, it appears that what she and, and Intelios are doing has application in other countries. And so I wanted to circle back on that. Pamela, are you primarily focused in on uh, Kenya only, or are there other countries of key focus for, for the work? Thank you. Um, we've started in Kenya um, because of the ability to partnership, the necessity to partnership with the Ministry of Health and because of the, the stakeholders and the contacts and the relationships that we have there. We have also made significant progress in South Africa. We also have, um, I have a lead uh, based in South Africa as well. Um, and right now, Uganda is very interested and ready to move forward. 
we don't yet have the resources available to do the type of work that we're doing in Kenya in Uganda. But once we get rolling, we do anticipate being able to move into Uganda as well. We've already made some outreaches and connections there. Um, in addition, Somaliland uh, is very interested to work with us. They do not have any types of funding at all. For us to be able to move into Somaliland, that would have to be a fully funded um, opportunity in order for them to be able to do anything. So we've started to reach out to funders to see if that's something just to get some, um, some impact in Somaliland. In addition, we are looking at, Tanzania is interesting because it's right there and there's also a need and we also have some, some contacts there. Um, and of course, Nigeria, they have um, as the most populated country, the highest maternal mortality rate in all of Africa. Um, we do, we've had some conversations in Nigeria as well. So likely we will start to do a little bit of work there as we can. In addition to some of those areas in Sub-Sahara, um, the Caribbean on our side of the ocean over here have similar barriers. Um, so there will likely be some work in the, in the Caribbean in the next year or two to start doing um, this type of policy work that we've been doing in Kenya. But to answer your question, Doug, yes, absolutely. We wanna expand and scale. We wanna ensure that the business model is sustainable and that we can scale not only within Kenya, but throughout, throughout the rest of the continent to make sure that it's functioning, it's, it's right for the economy, it's, it's supporting the needs of the individual countries, et cetera. So yes, absolutely. Fascinating. How are you deciding which, which countries? Is it mainly through connections that you have or is there a other way that you're strategically making those decisions? You know, I, I literally just presented on this exact topic over the weekend <laughs> of, of how we're deciding on market entry and, and growth, et cetera. It's a myriad of, re of, of um, reasons to enter a new country. One of them is absolutely, of course, connections and relationships, but also um, the resources that we have available at Intelios, who we have on the ground, the, um, the type of, um, I think, uh, I'm trying to think of the right world right word, but really the the capacity to be able to move into these countries because they're all so very different in understanding each market. So it's that type of on the ground understanding that we have to have before we really, really move in. We have folks that are reaching out to us from different places. And so having really um, wide exploratory calls and discussions to see where we can start making a little bit of inroads here and there, and then deciding on what that larger entry um, what that larger entry is. Um, but resources is probably the primary thing is, is can, can we move forward and do it in the right way um, without spreading ourselves too thin and, and um, not, not en enabling Kenya to be truly, truly successful before we go out and try to do too much. Yeah, that's great. Any re response, Cliff, or I see Nihi on the call from Nigeria, uh, uh, those certainly would be two key countries. Uh, Manir, you know, in terms of Morocco, I think that would be probably something to look at as well. Uh, hi, Nihi, how are you? I'm fine, Doug. Thank you very much. I'm okay. Good. You're looking great. Uh, any any response or any questions that you have for Patricia? Um, I'm, 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 Doug, I'm you'll get, get it one of these right. days. <laughs> it, no, I, I was writing you an email earlier, and I recognized I wrote Patricia in, in the email, and then when I screwed up on the on the on the there, I I changed it to, to Pamela. So I'm going to get that right. I'm going to work on that today. Okay. Sorry, Pamela. Not at all. Um, sorry, Nihi. Go ahead. No, no problem. Um, nice to meet Pamela. Um, I heard her talk about Nigeria and a few other countries. Uh, I think we can take the conversation um, offline yeah, and absolutely. see how we, can, how we can support in any way. I'll try and reach you on LinkedIn and take it from there. Or if Sixar can connect us by email, that will be wonderful as well. So thank you very I'll, much. I'll Doug. drop my email in the chat. Thank you. Where in Nigeria are you located? I'm in Lagos. I'm in Lagos. Awesome. I'm based in Lagos. Yeah. That's great. There's, thank there's... you. There's a couple things that are really great about Nihi. Number one is, I mean, he's honest and he's ethical and he's he's someone we can trust. We've been working with him for a number of years. He's our advisory board chair for the Lagos chapter. Oh, great. And the other aspect is he's in a legal 
he's a lawyer and he's uh, in a legal network that, that extends across Africa. So he has connections all over Africa. And he's been very helpful and instrumental in making connections in countries where we don't necessarily have the strongest network. So he, he is a great resource. And what type of law do you practice? Basically corporate, um, a bit of market. I mean, market entry is naturally a foster part of that. So I think it will become, will be helpful as far as. Yeah, I agree. It will be concerning. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. It looks like Chris, did you unmute yourself? Uh, Christopher Herring from Global Chamber San Antonio. Did you have a, a comment or a question or anything you'd like to add? I was just, yeah, I'm a little bit um slow. What does a global certification organization do uh, for Pamela and and how does a global certification organization and you know instill the trust in the regions in which you uh, will do your work? Thank you for that question. So um when we're speaking to a, a new entity to us, a new relationship, um, you know, I generally talk about how, we as an organization are accredited by the International Standards Organization out of Geneva. So we as an organization are accredited to certify personnel, individual individuals um, in the areas, uh, certain areas within healthcare, specifically ultrasound, um, magnetic resonance, computed tomography, um, point of care ultrasound, um, and vascular medicine. Most of our of our work is focused in ultrasound and point of care ultrasound, which means that if anyone, for example, since we've started in the, as a United States entity, if you know of anybody um, in your family, in your circle, who's ever had an ultrasound in the United States or Canada, they have been credentialed through us. In order to practice, they have to be certified through us. So our work is really based around quality, quality of care. That is our mission is to enable clinicians to be able to practice at the top of their license and to be able to provide the highest quality care to whoever they may be caring for. Our focus, particularly in East Africa, is working with midwives, et cetera, for their, um, for their maternal patients in order to provide positive outcomes, better outcomes um, in the areas of, of pregnancy. So that's the work that we do globally in working, some of our work at the United Nations, um, the International Confederation of Midwives, et cetera. We're really looking to elevate the quality of healthcare globally, but particularly in emerging markets to ensure that um, this is a way to elevate quality. This is a way to have broader access to this type of training and certification to ideally elevate quality and also expand task expansion among different clinicians. And so that's, I hope that answers your question. No, that's perfect. Thank you. Um, and in fact, I want to pivot to Cliff. Um, when we talk about um, uh, Kenya, you know, how do you now as the uh, the executive director or the president of, of your uh, Metro, how do you leverage the professional um, experience and network um, that you have uh, within your reach. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chris. I was yes. just about to ask uh, Pamela the same question, and uh, <laughs> the, the, question was, uh, the question was now since that they're in Kenya, how could we uh, come uh, on board? And she's a member of Global Chamber. How could you now leverage on uh, maybe a partnership or collaboration that uh, Italios now works with closely with, with <clears throat> Global Chamber? And uh, we offer, apart from the support that we offer, we also could also recruit some of the, 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 train, the, the trained uh, certified members to the Global Chamber. So th this is all the, the next question I was to ask Pamela, but thank you, Chris, for, for coming in. I know I know that is your area of expertise. Thank you for 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 the insight. So, and forgive me because this is my first global chamber anything. <laughs> my first call, my first anything. So <laughs> is is the question really um the more that our our outreach and our partnerships and our relationships to be able to bring them into the circle of global chambers so that we can then further do the ecosystem within global chamber as well as, and if that's the question, I, I certainly don't see why not. I think it makes sense. The more conversations that folks have and, um, and the better. That was one of the things that I mentioned in my talk this weekend actually is that 
to talk to everybody. <laughs> and so I think that that certainly supports that, um, that exactly. Thank you very much. Did that answer your question, Chris? Yes, it did. I just uh, I find that uh, a you know knowing how these global uh, certification organizations work is very important because um, sometimes it's implied, but we always have to kind of reiterate you know what they do because um, we want to also instill the same type of uh, global trust and in the advocacy of their work, and so to have a baseline and understanding. Um, is really a great thing. And so I'm so glad that uh, Pamela took my question, hit a home run with it, because yeah. it enabled me to know um, uh, more so about how uh, she saw that role and that responsibility. And then um, also for Cliff, I know that, you know, sometimes we have to, to as we're developing our, our own uh, metros, to really to look at those professionals uh, in, in Nairobi that uh, will be excellent also as thought leaders within the global chamber and to express some of the needs. Um, I thought that the conversation with the agri, uh, agri, agribusiness um, and, and so forth is very interesting. Um, I, I happen to support and work with um, a, um, uh, a business in uh, Uganda, which is a fairly uh, far from you, but um, with uh, the cow industry and uh, a gentleman that went to Trinity University as an alumni um, is in a mentoring uh, uh, program and his company is called Dubuntu. And Dubuntu uh, basically is developing an app that will allow um, African farmers the ability to scale and to, first of all, not only scale, but to know uh, how to uh, be cow farmers because many uh, in uh, his area of the world uh, do not know how to take on the work that was done by their fathers and and the mothers uh, in the in the past. So they're new farmers who have these uh, new opportunities uh, within uh, cow herding and farming uh, for milk and and for other uh, things. But uh, I noticed that in your demographics, you have a lot of um, indigenous uh, cows and 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 so. I think maybe just uh, also extending my uh, network for Alvin to meet you, uh, Cliff would be great because maybe there's some key interests and things in which uh, he can uh, provide from his uh, work with Trinity University and as well as uh, just being a part of this uh, global tribe. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Chris. I'll be I'll be waiting for the for the introduction, and then we'll take it from there. Very good. Uh, I, I don't know if Naidu can speak, but he's in, uh, in in Tanzania, and so is he still in the call? Yeah, Naidu, are you are you there? Um, and are you are you able to speak? Are you um, in Dar es Salaam, or are you in the U.S., or are you not available? I don't see any unmuting going on, so we may not be able to to hear from him. But you mentioned Tanzania earlier, and so I wanted to make sure that uh, if uh, he could comment on it, he's our global advisor there and doesn't seem to be reacting. Are, are there other countries uh, outside of Africa, Pamela, that are of interest to you? I see Santosh from India on the call. Um, are there other higher priority areas for the organization or is Africa right now the number one priority? Africa right now is our priority and our focus. Um, then Carib the Caribbean um, is likely bubbling up um, quite a bit in different areas, particularly the English speaking Caribbean. Um, I've had a couple of conversations that likely will start to pull in some, some of the Spanish speaking Caribbean and then into Latin America. India is very much an interest um, in, in a lot of different ways for Intellios. India is also um, it has a, a history with ultrasound and, and some challenge, challenging laws around it, um, which has made it a little bit difficult in um, enabling uh, all sorts of people to be able to practice ultrasound. Um, it's so that's been an area, but it's certainly some place that we would be interested in in working with and partnering with. 
Sounds good. Can can you also uh, talk, Pamela, a little bit about the opportunities you may have with uh, Windhoek, Namibia? Um, is is that on your radar? Um, we have a gentleman who's actually going to be presenting on Global Chambers um, platform to uh, talk about this new uh, concept of having a semi semi valley uh, in Africa, and that semi valley would be uh, in uh, Namibia. Namibia. And so uh, we have a, and I put into the chat uh, where everyone can sign up for the event next month in April on the 16th, but we, uh, I've met uh, this uh, gentleman, uh, Sebulon David, uh, back in 20, I think it was 15, uh, he was a Mandela fellow, um, came through the State Department uh, and uh, visited uh, Austin and, uh, and then came down to San Antonio where he was able to meet uh, my mayor and the, the two cities, San Antonio, and uh, and Winhook have uh, created a, a sister city partnership. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and I find that the sister city programs are very uh, good for Global Chamber because it allows us to know exactly where our metros are linked up uh, and partnered with. But uh, I'm excited to sit down with him doing a one-on-one -on -one conversation about uh, this concept of Simi Valley in Africa and uh, so with there again, I know he's always fighting for resources and he's a tech guy. So he's not on the agri cool. side, he's, he's a tech guy, yeah, but uh, he's really has been working very hard uh, over the, the last um, uh, nine years that I've met him on um, breaking this concept. So we're going to now make him the official king of the industrial village. And uh, that's going to be really dope. Looking forward to doing that. So um, cool. I just want yeah, did you have any priority for uh, that area of Africa? You know, um, I'd like to be everywhere where we can be, you know, a part of providing positive impact. You know, it comes down to the ability to to do that and to do it correctly and in the right way. And so that's not on our immediate horizon. We don't um, have any any contacts there or relationships yet. Um, and I've not done any research in that area to really learn anything. I don't know anything about the country um, in terms of the type of work that we do. If, although I would be very pleased to to meet him and Zebulon, is that what you said his name was? Yes, Zebulon David. And you can actually find him on LinkedIn as well. That's great. Thank you. I did also <laughs> meet um, somebody this weekend uh, from Zambia, and she's going to put me in touch with the Min Ministry of Health in Zambia as well. So, you know, you never know where conversations may lead. And that's kind of how we landed in Kenya and South Africa, among some other things. So I'm happy to talk to just about anybody. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. When is the event, Christopher? <laughs> yeah, the event uh, uh, with Sebulon uh, is on April the 16th. And um, we pushed it as late as he can be up and as early as we can be up in, in America. So um, you'll find it on the Global Chamber calendar, uh, globalchamber.org forward slash events. I did put the link in. And uh, also, uh, Pamela, you did mention uh, the Caribbean. So we also have uh, some uh, Global Chamber members uh, that actually uh, I met in uh, the Caribbean this week uh, at the University of Texas, uh, Austin. Uh, with um, Brandon Powell. Brandon is, um, he's also an IT uh, gentleman, but um, uh, there was also another uh, uh, fellow that the State Department brought over. And what I find is that these uh, these these fellows that come over, they've been uh, very well vetted by uh, the U.S. Uh, and they have the great potential to uh, move mountains. And so uh, we have the pleasure of being able to bring uh, 13 new um, members into Global Chamber from uh, the Americas. And so, and as we know, uh, the, the Americas uh, also uh, uh, experienced, uh, um, you know, impact through the, uh, the diaspora of the, uh, of the slave trade. And so we've been working with um, people trying to unify, trying to create more business opportunities to be supportive of uh, people like Cliff and uh, and his efforts to uh, unite uh, Africa. And so um, 
welcome to the global tribe. That's all I can say. You're you're a welcomed addition. So this is this is really this great. Is, this is quite an opening. I appreciate it from all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and, and it all it all starts with Doug, you know, and and <laughs> I can say that. Thank you. You're very kind. Um, so Cliff, sorry to kind of take you off a little bit of uh, track. Your thank you for your flexibility today. Um, what I know there's only a few more minutes left. How how would you like to cover uh, those? Okay, uh, I'll just I'll just give a few uh, comments and say that uh, everyone is welcome to uh, Global Chamber. And then I'll also just mention what we are doing in uh, Nairobi or what you're planning to do. In the next, uh, as you all know, also, I'm also a uh, director in the Phoenix Sports. Phoenix Sports is a um, uh, sports management company that uh, helps sports people to 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 get uh, sponsorship, to organize the events and stuff like this. And we have agreed with Phoenix Sports to bandwagon on the uh, next events. They'll be doing a uh, golf They'll be sponsoring golf in uh, every golf uh, fri golf Friday membership, and the Global Chamber will work with them uh, to introduce Global Chamber to members of the golf golf clubs, and uh, talk about Global Chamber and also and also hoping to get new members from the from from these events. So every month we'll have a golf tournament uh, championship uh, supported by by Global Chamber and uh, Phoenix Sports. So this is something which is in the pipeline and I'll also share it with you in terms of uh, getting members and also uh, in terms of creating our awareness of what is, who are we and what we are doing as at Global Chamber. Thank you very much, uh, Doug, for this uh, invitation. And I will give it over to you to close the, the, the session. Oh, hey, thank you. <clears throat> and um, Naidu is still in the line. Thank you, he sent me an email or a text uh, communication. Thank you, Naidu, that he's having technical problems and not able to uh, unmute himself. So uh, sorry, sorry, we, we haven't heard from you. But but if this is a, of an interest to you, please let us know. I know you've been doing some work uh, in this area. <laughs> really appreciate everybody uh, today and the conversation. Uh, thank you, Pamela, for sharing more Thank you all. The next uh, conversation um, is, I think, April 16th for this meeting. This one happens every month. <clears throat> the next Africa meeting, I believe, is uh, in Ghana. We didn't really talk about Ghana, but there's certainly a lot of opportunity there. Uh, we just did an event last week uh, for the Sahara the region with um, primarily focus on Burkina Faso. but. Uh, Mali and that that region right right there right above Accra and Ghana um, was a, a key focus and we're going to be doing that one again because when we did the event last week there was an internet issue uh, across most of Africa and different countries and Burkina Faso happened to be the worst connected uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire and uh, and Burkina Faso were the most impacted. So on the day that we did the event, so so we're um, Tanya, who's our uh, executive director, will be uh, uh, rescheduling that along with Kasum, who's our executive director in Mali. So thank you everybody for participating. Jump into the conversation uh, next week in Accra, and I think next week also. Um, uh, we've got a, a con another conversation, a follow-up conversation on AI with Jacob. That's next week too, Jacob, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we have that next Thursday, uh, language AI. And so we have two experts, including our own Yuka. I mean, two. We have a new member, uh, uh, I believe, are the second member on the panel. He just signed up uh, for Global Chamber. And so both of them are based in Spain. Uh, experts in in language AI and and we always have have a good time. Tons of really good information and uh, you know high quality connections. So looking forward to it. Come join. Hey Doug, um, Jacob is outstanding, um, oh. and I and I I watch how everyone has their head down and they're into their computers while he's talking and they're trying out what he's telling them about AI and they come back up and it's like, yes. So um, <laughs> we, we have one of the best AI series 
and all of the world. And Jacob, uh, great job. I'm so encouraged. And I'll be signing up, of course, to uh, be in your classroom, <laughs> your global classroom. <laughs> Yeah, I was a former middle school teacher, so I think maybe I, I, I put on my old teacher hat when I'm in there. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> That's much. That's the Chris. toughest age. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody have uh, any additional comments? And uh, Cesar, I think you're on the line. Is there anything that we either forgot or uh, that needs to be uh, said here as we close? Hi, Doug, and hi, everyone. Um, no, I think it was it was a great call. It was um, great learning um, more about Kenya and learning more about Intelios as well through Pamela. Um, so Pamela, I'm going to be sending you a couple of emails after the call because I, awesome. I just took some notes and I just wanted to you know make sure you were connected. Um, quick question. Do you speak Spanish? Do you have someone who speaks Spanish in the in the team? Si, sí, hablo un poquito. Hablo más italiano, pero sí. Puedo okay. entender. <laughs> okay, because you, you mentioned Latin America and the Caribbean, so we do have some monthly calls, and, and I was thinking about inviting you to some of those, um, but I will keep you posted on all that. Please do. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Oh, before...